Okay, so something a little bit different in this week's video. Um, we've had a Bentley flying spur in recently and I did all the filming on the paintwork on it. Now I haven't quite finished the next video on the Audi as far as filming up to where I want to before I put the next video up. So I thought I'd put this one in between part one and part two of that. Also the 30,000 um, subscriber giveaway. I will pop a short video up exclusively for that giveaway on Sunday night about the rules and how to enter etc etc so I've not filmed the repair process on this um, I did a few late nights to get this car done um, so rather than doing it through the day because I'm being really busy um, I started and did this at night so when I was actually doing this this was around about six half six at night um, but it meant that I could just get this sorted out for this customer in between the work that I've got going on on the Audi pickup at the moment, which you guys will have seen in last week's video. So it's had some damage around the door handle, um, where the door handle's actually been hit, and there was a little bit of damage on the arch. Nothing massive, it looked a lot worse than it was, but once it had been metal pulled, um, it wasn't too bad at all. Now. The colour for this um, is Onyx, um, which is quite funny really because the car was um, stickered up as being a Beluga. Now I used to work at Bentley for a while and I know that Beluga is like a very solid, pure like oil slick black, um, whereas Onyx is a metallic black. Um, the paint code for it is LC9X, the same as on the Volkswagens. I think Bentley's paint code for it is something like 2T or 2C or something along those lines. But it's basically, it is just LC9X, which you can find through Volkswagen or through Bentley on a colour chip system. So, we've got everything primed up. You can see the darker blue, uh, grey areas where I've just put a little bit of wet on wet, a couple of those swage lines and a couple of them edges where I've rubbed through. Now I'm using the Capsi base coat for this, obviously, bearing in mind we've got their scheme in now. Um, I'm running this through my Welcome with the 1.3 set up in it. Um, I found that this gun does really well with spraying base at like 2 bar and then if I knock it back to like 25 psi for the drop coat and effect coat then it has no problems whatsoever. Uh, with this being solvent, this first coat, I'm just putting it down nice and gently making sure we've got no issues or anything anywhere before I open it up like I am now and then start putting it down a lot wetter. So at this stage, all I'm trying to do is color up the repair. I'm not worrying about the blend or anything like that for this first coat. I just want to get a real good thick, good wet coat down there, get this color built up. Um, I prepped this up to, I think 800 um, with like one of the 3M blue 800 soft pads. Um, so there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever with any prep marks or anything showing after this first coat. So if this first coat's got it up to a stage where it's fully coloured um, and we've got full coverage on it, then we can just do a, like a blend coat um, and a few little drop coats to make sure the colour's all nice and even and then go from there. Obviously with this being solvent, um, it's flashing off really quick as well, which is a great help when you've got... A job like this that you start at like six, half six at night. Um, it was a very long day. Um, I don't think I got home till about nine o'clock this night. But it meant that I could get it done um, when there was no one around. There was no customers in and out. It was nice and peaceful. I could take my time and not have to rush around or stop and start because my phone was going or anything like that. I could literally just take my time, concentrate on the job at hand, just chill out um, and enjoy knocking out what is a very nice car. So, second coat, we're just going for sort of like a three quarter coat now because that first coat was a real nice heavy wet coat. And as you can see at the end there, I'm just turning the gun out a slight bit just to start that blend moving towards the front edge of that door. Now, I camera'd this and the camera match said it was really good. And it's been something that since changing paint systems has been a bit of a worry in my mind because the less old camera system was always so perfect with its colour matches like you could almost do a job like this that's a metallic black edge to edge and it'd be absolutely perfect so changing paint systems it has taken a bit of time to sort of get a little bit of faith um, 
in the system. Um, we've had no issues with it so far. Everything's been going well. But it's just been in the back of my mind that obviously the lesson all was a really high end system and this was not a lower end system, but this is obviously a cheaper system compared to the lesson all. So it's, it was always in the back of my mind like, are, is the camera system and the computer system gonna perform as well? But as you can probably tell here, you know, if I'm using it on something like this flying spur, then I've got no issues with using it on any job that we get in. Um, we used their system start to finish on this, so we've used their high build, we've used their base, uh, and I use their clear. And for those of you guys that always say that you're gutted that you don't always get to see a car built up at the end, um, I've got shots of this car completely finished, done and dusted outside the workshop so you guys can take a good look at how the car looks when it's done. So that second coat that I put on was just putting building up that colour a tiny bit more and then start to work on the blends. This now I'm just doing a little bit of a drop coat. Um, Onyx is quite, I wouldn't say a coarse metallic, but it's got quite a bit of coarseness to it. So I just want to make sure that all these metallics now are laid down nice and even. Just finish off that last bit of that blend towards the front edge. And I'm just feathering it out through this quarter panel just to make sure that everything's nice. And there was a few very light marks um, in the very sort of back lower part of this quarter across there. So I just flipped the colour that a little bit further just to make sure that I could just eliminate them little issues that were in the car when it came in. So that performed really well as far as the colour goes and everything for that. You can see on the shelf I've got a little Iwata W300 um, that I've had off a friend of mine. I had that because I wanted a good base gun as well as a good clear minigun. Um, I've already got a clear, good clear minigun. I wanted another good minigun for when I'm doing little blow-ins and stuff. Um, and we did do the two front wheels on this. So after I'd done the car, sorry, before I did the car, um, I based the wheels up, give that like a five minute bake and then covered the wheels up, which is why I've got two guns in there in two colors. Um, and then I just cleared everything up then with the welcome afterwards. Now for the clear coat, I'm using the Capsity 6030. Um, I'm using the extra fast hardener. I've got no reducer or thinner in this whatsoever. It's just straight mixed as it is. Um, I'm running two and a half turns out on the first coat at two bar of air pressure. Now I didn't tack in between the coats on this because I never left the booth. Um, I stayed in the booth during the flash off times. Like I said, you can tell outside it's dark. It was late at night, so I didn't need to be in and out of the booth messing around. Um, so I didn't tack in between the coats of base. Everything was going down nice and clean. Um, obviously with the boob having a refresh recently, that's made a massive difference to how clean the jobs are coming out. So I'm just giving it a tack off now to make sure that any overspray is off any of these blend areas. Um, just to make sure that well I've gone out and mixed my clear up, no overspray has landed anywhere and there's no issues. Um, like dust or anything that's come down from the filters because sometimes you do get it um you do get it sometimes that like when you open and close the door on the booth if the door bangs back to then it can dislodge a bit of dust from the filters so i'm just going around just triple checking everything before i go much further now i know there'll be a few people that might be a little bit triggered by the fact that the rear lights left in and a few people that are probably be more triggered by the fact that the door handles kind of half hanging out now if you ever strip one of these or any of these Bentleys down, you'll know that they are notoriously fun for stripping down, um, for starters. Um, especially on this flying spur, on the inside of the back door, it's got a big steel plate that covers the whole inside of the back door. Now, the only issue from getting that door handle fully removed was one wire that's connected to it, which meant removing the steel plate, and the steel plate holds the whole window mechanism in, um, or the window mechanism or the locking mechanism um, it's bonded to it as well it's not just bolted so I rang the customer and said look I can get it really nice and really clean um, without fully removing this handle are you okay with that because the covers from each side of the handle come off and then you're just left with a really small frame piece and the chrome section hanging off um, and we could get it like you'll see in a minute we could get right behind there so it wasn't an issue um, 
with the paint right around it and right inside where the handle was. Um, none of that tape's actually touching the paint, so there was no issue there whatsoever. Um, but it saved a massive amount of strip down, and also on a car like this, a lot of risk um, by accidentally damaging something when something comes apart. Because I can tell you from like reordering the chrome trim for the door handle, that tiny little chrome trim was not cheap. So, in order to keep things not more cost effective, because let's face it, on a car like this, if they've got a car like this, then they can normally afford to pay like the proper price for the repairs, and they did. But if it comes to the risk of like potential accidental damage um, from pulling all that off, and the amount of time it's going to take on a car like this, one to strip all that off, and then to put it all back on, get it all the bond cleaned off it, rebond it all up, and everything, the customer was more than happy to have that masked up, so it was as it is there. I can still get a really nice, proper, clean paint finish around it. Um, so there's no issues whatsoever there. So if this first coat are clear, you see I'm going a lot wetter than usual. This flying spur is on a 2015. So this is back in the day when Bentley was still doing a mirror finish on all their vehicles. So basically when they were painted, they had a full 1500 wet flat. Um, then they got a full 3000. The dark colour's got 6000 and then they'd have a full polish um, on top of that um, to basically give it that ultra flat mirror finish. So this is quite a rare one, it's right on the sort of change over time from when Bentley stopped doing the mirror finish process. <coughs> but because this needs to be fully mirror finished after it's been painted, I am putting down two real good, real wet, um, heavy coats of clear I'll give it a long bake the next morning so that I've got plenty of clear the next night when I stay back again to polish it up um, to really cut that right back and get it that ultra flat finish that this Bentley should be and I've noticed that there is some other areas on this car that the customer is probably going to come back for at some point where it's been refinished at other shops um, and it's not been mirror finished properly in some of the other areas where it's been painted so we're going to have it back in at some point and correct them areas for him as well. But overall, I think this came out really nice. Now for the second coat, I've wound this up to two bar, but now I'm around about three to three and a half turns out on the fluid. I'm putting this out quite wet now. I'm not hanging around with it. I want to give this now a real wet, real good flow out. I want a real nice wet, smooth finish. But at the same time, I want that little bit of extra clear coat on there so that, as I said, I can take this fully back and give it a full polish. Um, it didn't take long because the off-the-gun finish on this came out really, really nice. Um, so it only took me, I think I stayed back the next night for like two, two and a half hours. Um, gave it a full wet flat, a full 3000, and then a full rotary cut, and then a full um, DI the hologram to get rid of any hologram in and any swirls from the rotary cut and it came up really really nice now in order to put it down this wet I did turn the temperature up on the booth to I think it was about 28 degrees just to put a bit of extra um, heat in there to help this flash off that little bit faster that extra heat will help me lay the clear down that little bit wetter and get that little bit smoother flatter finish that will get me closer to where I need to be once it's polished um, so it will save me a lot of polishing time um, and obviously not having any reducer in there it's going down with a real good solids content it's not diluted at all it's going down real pure fresh clear coat that I can then have a bit of clear to work with when I come round to the actual polishing stage and overall it came out really nice the other thing is I know some people are probably asking in the comments why I used paper. Um, I would literally didn't realise that I'd run out of poly roll and that's the only reason that I've used paper to mask this up um, because I started masking it up really late in the day. Um, it's about four o'clock or something that I started masking it up so I could stay back that night and get it painted. Um, after I got a lot of the Audi bits into primer then it just made sense that rather than waiting um, I'd just spend half an hour, an hour, and get this done in paper so I could stay back that night as planned. 
and get this smashed out so the next night I could stay back and get it all polished up and rebuilt for the customer. You can see here, I'm just double checking round, um, just making sure that I've got no bits that I feel that are a little dry or that are a little bit too peely. Just adding a few little bits of clear where I need it so that it can end up with that real, real nice gloss and that real nice flat finish on this Bentley once this had flowed out and it had been baked. So I'm going to leave you guys with some final pictures of the car. Now that will include some pictures of the before and also of the after of this and also once it was rebuilt and finished and washed and outside ready for the customer to collect. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, don't forget to tune in on Sunday night when I pop up the details for the 30,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, that is it for me for today and I shall see you again soon. Bye for now.